written in, in Luthier. It's not about just being able to make this beautiful shaped body, no. which is There's a lot which is a, a lot that. of talent mm-hmm. just there. There's all this other stuff you've well, got to know. Well, like I said, it's the combination. It's the combination of yeah. the words, whether or not the uh, you know. Um, well, I've watched you go. Hey, that nut is not one and five eighths. It can't be a, st- a telly. Well, I don't know if that's the right measurement. I'm just using yeah, it as an example. Saying, just yeah, saying, hey, that, that, that yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Well, obviously, I mean, you can, uh, okay, we all know this. Every every musician out there will say the same thing, but they, they don't even fully understand what it is they're saying a lot of times. They say uh, you could play 50 less Pauls or 10 less Pauls in a room and they won't all sound the same. Now, why is that? Because everything, even if it's the same type of wood, mm-hmm. it's not the same piece of wood. That's right. It's it comes down to being wood. that, and yeah. it's not the same. It's not, it's not the same set the same. of. It's not the same set of, of fret wires. All of this counts. Every little nit nat detail counts. Every and that's little the, detail counts. And that's the problem. Uh, that's the reason why when we find that one guitar, that just yeah. wow. Yeah, you don't argue with the price. Well, we you were talking just about <laughs> we were talking about the stress that can come in the back of these necks when you start looking at this. You're oh, yeah. coming across and you, you're going across, you're cutting across the grain here, mm-hmm. and and this is a solid neck, but the wrong piece of wood, and this could be vibration in here that you just you yeah, can't yeah. even see where it's coming from. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. No, that, yeah, and you can listen to the wood. A good luthier is going to do that. Yeah, he's going to listen to the wood, and if he likes what he hears, he's he's going to. Bear that in mind as he removes wood, because when he, as he removes wood, he's changing the resonant frequency of that piece of wood. Mm. Now he's got to glue it together to another piece. He's got to take that into account. Mm. Now the new two pieces don't sound the same. They've changed radically. Mm-hmm. Okay, because gluing a fretboard onto a neck radically changes the sound of each piece. Of course, yeah. Okay, absolutely. You change the mass. Yeah. Then yeah. you've got to bolt this thing or glue it to a body. Again, that changes the mass. When you carve. The belly scarf or the arm scarf. Again, you've changed the mass. You've fine, you've begun to fine tune it. I actually listen to this stuff and remove enough wood, and sometimes I take off a little more than I ought to because I'm trying to get to a sound. Mm. Now, a lot of people don't think that's true. They're like, "Oh no, electric guitars. You don't even need to worry." Oh, that's baloney. It's all I, I, in the no, pickup. It's not true, and it's that's not, not true at all because no. I've heard guitars, the same guitar with multiple pickups in it, and it does not necessarily change. The um, the overall tone of the guitar, and they're in my opinion, this is my own theory, and every luthier out there has their own theory, and that's very important. They, they have to have a, a mental picture of what it is they're building and why, mm-hmm. because without that, you, you're wandering around without a roadmap. So in my in my world of building, um, when I am listening to a piece of wood, <clears throat> I'm trying to get a a tonal picture, okay, in my head. Mm-hmm. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, uh, okay. And that each piece of wood, be, because it is different, it has to, you kind of have to worry about the combination of what it is that you're building. You have to know all the things that you're planning to use. What's, what, how big is the bridge? What's the mass of this thing? Is it, is it aluminum, steel, or brass? You know, what kind of pickups are we going to use? What kind of t- keys are we going to use? Is this going to have a bone nut, a plastic nut, a wooden nut? A, a Corian nut, or is it going to be a roller nut or steel? All of that stuff matters. All of those resonant frequencies are going to work together, or they're going to fight together. Mm-hmm. And when you get them all married together as one piece, how do you listen to the wood? Well, again, with electric guitars in my world, there are two basic tones: okay. the attack tone. That's mm-hmm. when that's the first pick strike. That is 100% pickup, but it only lasts, you know, half a second. Yeah, it's an instant. It's an instant. It's gone. After that, what you get is the decay tone. Yeah. Okay, because the energy travel uh, tr- from the pick strike travels out on the string, goes into the body, goes into the headstock, and then they literally pass each other, mm-hmm. and the wood's resonant frequencies will filter out. Because as that set of frequencies is going into the wood. It excites the wood at the frequencies it resonates at. It's mm-hmm. the old trick of taking a, a glass and rubbing, rubbing your finger yeah, yeah, on yeah, yeah. it. Crystal and glass. if you put more water in it, it changes, changes the, pitch. the pitch. Yes. Okay. okay. So the idea is, is that the wood, if it vibrates, 
it's sucking away that frequency. Slowly. It's slowly. Or it's, quickly. It's, it's dissipating on... that energy. Yeah, you're right. Okay? It's diffusing. Now, yeah. it's going to pass all the other frequencies. The frequencies that are not exciting that wood, it's just going to pass them mm. right back into the string. So now you have an altered energy going into the string. Mm -hmm. Okay, So the string begins to have this decay sound that's completely different from the attack sound. You would think this is a no-brainer, but no, there's many people that don't get that. I've actually yeah. done bizarre experiments, and you can you can go on YouTube and see these slow motion string experiments. Never believe that you did any type of bizarre experiment. <laughs> Dude, I've done a lot of bizarre experiments, but we won't go there. No, it's a kid friendly. No, it's not but obviously, no, there's nothing kid friendly about it. It can't be. We're Otherwise talking about guitars. This is serious yeah, business. <laughs> man. The kids are all right. <laughs> yeah. So, um. There's a million places to go with this. Oh but yeah. The thing that is beating my brain right now that I that I that I want to know is, is is this. You talk about a lot of this stuff in a very bizarre way, and I mean that in the highest mm -hmm. compliment because what what I hear you doing is talking about very scientific engineering. Yeah, stuff. a lot of it is. In a very that's why I in, say in it actually very, is rocket science, but it just isn't is complicated. But, but you so say it in a very it. spiritual way. Is it well, a Zen type of thing that he? Well, I don't know if it's Zen or not. I, I'm not really. I wouldn't consider myself that type of a person, to be honest. And I think that that's uh, kind of more about what you're talking about when you when you say that. So there's passion involved. You mm. got to have a passion for this, or you'll give up. Yeah, and that's the truth. You'll just be like, eh, forget it. Yeah, because it's uh, it's uh, endless. But isn't there that moment when you pick up that piece when you? That's the one. You just. I'm going to tell you something. You Are don't, you totally you don't just know what you're going to get until yeah. you string it up and play it. Yeah. And I've got a, I've got a story that's uh, that's bizarre, but it's true. Let's hear it, man. Um, that's what we're here for. Years ago, a fellow named Schuyler came to see me. And Schuyler. Schuyler was his name. And he played with a little band here in town. Um, he came to me and he said, uh, I want you to build me a custom strap. Yeah. Okay. And I want it... Uh, I forgot what it was. I think it was a humbucker and a single. Might have been a humbucker and two singles. I've forgotten now. Um, hardtail, wanted swamp ash, maple neck with a rosewood board. Mm -hmm. Nothing outrageous. And at mm -hmm. the time, I was just saying, okay, a standard custom strat is going to be X price. You know, and I gave him a price of like fifteen hundred bucks. So I get started building this thing. I didn't have any any really fabulous swamp ash. I had some. I had enough to make a body, but it was going to be a three-piece body, and I asked him, and he said, that's fine. So, and okay. we talked about finishes, and I said, in my personal opinion, and my personal experience, uh, glossy, high-glossy finishes, you know, it's like wrapping a guitar in a blanket of plastic, and eventually you're gonna, eventually it will open up, but it's gonna take time, a long time, you know, five to seven years minimum for that stuff to begin to open up a little bit and get some checking in it and you know loosen yeah, up yeah, yeah, yeah. okay and people talk about that when they talk about guitars open up and season and that kind of stuff yeah. that's all about the finish because i've heard guitars mocked up with no finish on it that's when they sound the best okay so my uh, personal recommendation has always been an oil finish something simple that oil just coats the surface and it doesn't go super deep and it doesn't do anything more than just make it relatively and not completely uh, waterproof. You know, where if you drop some water on it, it's not going to soak in deep. But you should get it off there fairly quickly. <laughs> yeah, Don't yeah. leave it there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's the minimal protection that you can get on a Don't guitar. Don't set your beer on your telly. But it's also the maximum amount of freedom for the, for the wood to vibrate and do mm -hmm. its job. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, the guitar is a device designed to do nothing but vibrate. So, <clears throat> we built this guitar for Scholar. We strung it up, and oh my God, this thing sounds like a million bucks. It's scary. This guitar is one of those guitars that if you ever grabbed one, you would instantaneously know this isn't normal. Hmm. This guitar was the kind of instrument that just keeps giving, no matter how hard you play, no matter what yeah. you play, it just keeps giving, and it sounds like it's got more to give. Now, I'm, I don't consider myself to be a great player by any shakes, but I can do what I do. Right? Yeah, sure. And I can hear this. This guitar is like, this ain't normal. This ain't your daddy's Les Paul. Yeah. 
Okay? Ain't no Les Paul on the planet sounds like this. Ain't no Strat on the planet sounds like this. I happen to have a real genuine uh, recording artist in the shop that day, which I won't mention his name, but uh, yeah. he was a really, really good guitar player, and, and folks in Chattanooga know him. Uh, the guy could play his butt off. I mean, he was a true shred master of the, of the 80s, okay? And he heard me playing the guitar and says, dude, let me, let me play that. And he plays it for about 30, 40 minutes. While he's playing, I'm calling Scholar and say, hey, man, your guitar's ready. Is it any good? <laughs> you need to get over here and play it. <laughs> you know? So, uh, and you better hurry because this guy is hurry. wanting to take it with him, I think. <laughs> so, uh, he, uh, the, the, you know, the, this name, this top name player is sitting over there just shredding. I mean, he's pushing this guitar and he's like, it just has more in it. It just wants to give and give. It's just crazy. This guitar it just has this live, in your face fire in it. It's yeah. incredible. The tone is in so inspiring. You don't want to be, you're yeah. starting to get giddy, laughing with no this kid. guitar because yeah. it yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just got it. You know, mm. it's just so magical. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And Scotter comes in and he's listening to the guitar and says, wow, that sounds phenomenal. Of course, now he's kind of coming at it. And that first thing, I can kind of tell, he's going, wow, that guy could really play. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's not really catching on to what's going on there, right? And this guy who's playing the guitar, he says, man, this guitar is awesome. You wouldn't want to trade it, would you? He says, well, I don't know, I might. He ain't even played it yet, right? Yeah. And he says, what do you got to trade? And he pulls out, a Fender Custom Shop. This was probably around 1994. So okay. this was a, a brand new Fender Custom Shop. Um, it was a set neck strat with bird's eye maple tops, ebony board, abalone inlay, gold hardware, gorgeous, yeah. beautiful guitar. Price tag on this thing was 4,500 bucks. Yeah. It's not a cheap guitar yeah. by any means. Yeah. And he's like, I will trade you dead even right now for that guitar. No shit. So the kid plays it, you know, Scouter, he gets it over and he plays it. And I'm not going to lie to you, man. That guitar was dead in a doornail. I mean, mm -hmm. it sounded terrible. Really? It was just, I mean, it's like playing a piece of barbed wire. It just didn't have anything going for it at all. <laughs> it was beautiful, <laughs> but it was a chunk. That is not what makes a guitar, folks. <laughs> no. So yeah. he said, he said, man, it's really, it's really beautiful. I love it and everything, but let me play mine. So he just kind of plays it. Within 10 minutes, he's going, oh, my God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? He's freaking out. He's like, I know I'm an idiot. He plays it for another 20 or 30 minutes. He's, and he looks at, looks at this, this name brand guitar player. Yes. He says, I, I know I'm an idiot because your guitar is worth a whole lot of money, and I could probably sell that and buy two more like this. And, but they won't sound that way. And, and I told him, I said, just to interject, I can't promise you I can build that again. That's a lightning strike guitar. Yeah. That's a one of a kind. Yeah, it's like from the movie The Natural. Absolutely. It was just <laughs> it was just one of those things. Yeah. This is I don't even know why it sounds that way. I built it the way I always build them, but they don't always they don't all come out like that. If they did, I'd be the richest luthier on the planet. Yeah, absolutely. If you could you could bottle that that right. lightning. Yeah. If I could bottle that, it's lightning in a bottle. That that would be the deal. But he said, I'm probably an idiot, but I think I'll stay with this one. Well, the rest of this story gets nasty. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, it gets really nasty. Oh. So Scouter calls me back about six months later and says, Oh, no. Dude, this is an awesome guitar. I'm digging it everywhere I go. People rave about how it sounds. And yeah. And I'm loving it, but... Oh, no. I can't deal with this oil, dry-looking finish. Can you oh, Can no. you put a gloss finish on it? I said, Scholar, you, don't you do, do that. not want to do this. It'll be the biggest mistake of your entire life. Don't do this. And he's he said, okay, I'll 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 hang on to it for a little longer. He called me back about another six months. And said, I can't live with it. I can't live with it. I just got to have a glossy finish. I said, all right, bring it over. We brought it over. We disassembled it. We sanded it down. We sent it out and got a really nice thin nitrous halos finish done on it. Really thin. Okay, super thin. 
put it back together. <laughs> she was just dead Magic as that custom was shop. As dead as that custom shop guitar. It, it had nothing going for it. Nothing. Ugh, that sucks. And I handed it back to him, and he was, like, really upset. <laughs> you know, he, he call, started calling me, like, two or three weeks. And, dude, dude, what, what, happened happened to sound? what are we going to do? And I said, I warned you. I told, told you. you. I, I made him sign a waiver yeah. saying, not my fault. I told you, don't do this. Don't do it. It's a big mistake. He was like, well, what are we going to do? And I said, well, I don't know. But you're going to you're gonna pay me whatever we do because I'm not doing Anything else to that guitar? I already told you. I gave you all the advice you could. I could give you from all the years of experience oh, I've had, man. and there's nothing else I can do for you. And he said, "We got to do something. Can you just take this finish back off and put a fin oil finish on?" I said, "It's too late. It's not going to fix it. No. It's you've already let those chemicals get deep into that guitar. It's not coming out of there, and it's not going to sound that way ever again in its life."